One of the first things that we do when we look at a patient, male or female, we're going to look at adrenal function. And adrenal function is very important because your adrenals make cortisol. Cortisol is an anti-inflammatory hormone. Most people in today's day and age, they're not under-inflamed, they're over-inflamed. So having your body's natural anti-inflammatory system on board is vital, very, very important. Second is cortisol rhythm. Uh, cortisol rhythm plays a major role in your circadian rhythm, which is waking up, energy in the morning. Um, having good rhythm helps a lot with mood and also um, lower cortisol at night and that nice gentle taper of cortisol. So cortisol starts, it starts mid-range when you wake up and then that first 30 minutes to an hour, it almost doubles. And then from there, it tapers down throughout the whole day. And we want a nice lower cortisol rhythm, lower cortisol level at nighttime so we can wind down and relax. Not too low where we start having maybe blood sugar issues, which could wake us up at night and not too high where we could have problems going to bed because we're too wired, right? Or not a reverse pattern where we're lower in the morning, which means low energy and higher at night, relatively speaking, which could cause us to have um, too much energy at night and then we don't get good sleep. So the adrenals play a really big role because of cortisol and its effects on anti-inflammatory mood, rhythm, sleep. And then also, especially for women listening, men too, but DHEA, DHEA sulfate is a precursor to a lot of our sex hormones that helps with our female hormones. And that plays a big role in healthy, um, healthy reproduction. Um, people, people think when they talk about female hormones, they're just thinking about having babies. No, your hormones are there to reproduce you. Yeah, reproduce a baby, but also reproduce you, which means healthy aging, healing, recovery. As a man too, healing, recovery, healthy libido, good muscle building, uh, and good building the ability to turn over your tendons and ligaments and bones. All these things require good, healthy anabolic metabolism. Yeah, great point. You know, one thing you, you pointed out, which I think a lot of people miss with cortisol, is you mentioned cortisol being too low at night and that impairing your sleep. See, most people, just the buzzword or if they've ever heard of cortisol, if they've heard of adrenal testing and things like that, they think, okay, high cortisol at night equals poor sleep. But you mentioned low cortisol at night or too low cortisol at night could also be an issue because of that blood sugar. And then what can happen is you and I've covered this before, but there's some sort of a spike, right? Maybe an adrenaline cortisol spike in the middle of the night. Is that what you think is happening? Yeah. So with sleep issues, you could definitely see a low cortisol kind of going into nighttime or a low cortisol during the night. And that can cause a drop in blood sugar. And that drop in blood sugar can then signal a increase in adrenaline. So adrenaline tends to come to the scene first. Cortisol tends to come to the scene 10, 20 minutes later or so. So you get this spike of adrenaline that's very stimulatory that increases cortisol and then now you're alert and you're waking up, right? So we want to make sure higher cortisol, lower cortisol at night that's causing a increase in cortisol is not happening due to blood sugar regulations. We want good blood sugar, good healthy protein and fats, um, maybe work on amino acids and melatonin production at or around bedtime and maybe have something by your nightstand to help stabilize blood sugar before and or, and or if you get up like a nice simple collagen smoothie or a really good protein and fat based um, simple bar by your nightstand to stabilize blood sugar. Those are all really, really good options to help you on the sleep side.